thinks that there was collusion, that the big guys, all of you guys, were figuring out how to do this and ultimately come out ahead as you always do. Um, but did you talk to them about restricting or doing anything to prevent people from buying, not selling, but buying in GameStop? Let me be- Anybody in your organization? Let me be perfectly clear. Absolutely not. Do you know who this guy is? Because if you don't, you should. This is the guy behind the short squeeze on AMC, on GameStop and all that. He's actually the guy who runs Citadel. His name is Ken Griffin. He makes over a hundred million a month from Citadel. Now, some of you bought diamond hands. I'm going to hold for three weeks, three months. You're trying to short squeeze this guy. He runs a $200 billion fund. It's going to take a little bit longer than three months to do it. Hold it till the end, baby. First of all, the market is rarely dead wrong. And, and the history books are littered with people who are smarter than the market who've lost all their money. So when you're, when you're in an investment and it's not working out, you, you really need to take a step back. What don't I understand in this situation? If you really think you've resolved all the unknowns that you can possibly get your head around, you stay with your position. Can I help you, sir? I'm just making sure the theaters are running smoothly. Do you work here? Let's just say I'm a partial owner. I'm the money. Don't you come in every Saturday night with your mom? Not anymore. You keep up the good work. One more thing. Drop the M. What? It's cleaner. Richest person in every state. Part two is Illinois. Ken Griffin. No, we're gonna talk about this one because this guy is in some pretty big hot water and everyone in the United States should hear about it. For those of you who don't know, back in January there was an event in the stock market called a short squeeze. Basically, a lot of big finance firms decided to short sell GameStop, which they bet against it, and retail investors decided to buy the stock, driving up the price and forcing Wall Street to pay the price. If you want to read about it, here's a pretty good summary. Now, this short squeeze primarily had to do with GameStop. There are a few other stocks that were involved, notably AMC is another one. Um, but yeah, it primarily had to do with GameStop. As you can imagine, Wall Street doesn't like losing, and so they did a lovely little thing to keep people from buying their shorted stock. And what they did was they had the brokerages shut down the buy button. So, take for example, Robinhood app. They only let you have one share of GameStop if you're using Robinhood. It, it's, it's messed up. Here's a screenshot from another brokerage called Weeble. Now, here's a fun question. If it's Wall Street firms and not brokerages that had a lot to lose by um, GameStop price going up, then why did the broker just shut down the buy button? Enter Citadel Securities. Brokerages make their money through a little thing called payment for order flow. Basically, market makers pay the brokerage to direct orders to them. Citadel Securities is one such market maker. They pay Robinhood and other brokerages to direct orders to them. But Citadel Securities isn't just a market maker. They're also a hedge fund, which is basically when a bunch of people pull money together, and like usually rich people pull money together, to make bets on the stock market. According to FINRA, GameStop was shorted 226%. So that, that's a pretty massive amount, and Citadel was one of the hedge funds that was behind that shorting. So Citadel being one of Robinhood's biggest customers, it would be in Robinhood's and other brokerages' best interest to keep Citadel afloat. And if they're short on GameStop, obviously they wouldn't want Citadel going bankrupt because of GameStop. So obviously it's a logical conclusion that, yeah, they would commit market manipulation and shut down the buy button so they can keep one of their biggest customers. 
Now, during the congressional hearing that happened over all of this, um, Ken Griffin stated that there was no communication between Citadel and Robin Hood during this time. Who is Ken Griffin? Oh, just the CEO of Citadel. That's all. No biggie. Oh, wait. Ring, ring. What's that? This right here is a court document that's uh, showing that, yeah, Citadel did in fact engage in um, communication with Robin Hood. Here's CEO of uh, Robin Hood talking specifically about how he wanted to now chat with Ken Griffin. So yeah, the two companies talked. This is a pretty big deal. Um, some news media outlets are now starting to cover it too. So, so yeah, Ken Griffin lied under oath about uh, his role in market manipulation. Uh, lying under oath is pretty illegal. You can you can go to jail for that. Anyway, I'd like to conclude by saying that unless Ken Griffin faces actual punishment for lying about his role in the events of the January short squeeze, America does not have free and fair markets. This is what happens when you have late stage capitalism.